Addis Business Talk with Khaled and Marid on Afro FM 105.3. We'll be talking to policymakers, investors, business leaders, and entrepreneurs to bring you the latest development taking place in the Ethiopian economic and business climate, and more importantly, what it means to you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening from Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. This is Addis Business Talk with Khalid and Merit every Thursday morning on Afro FM 105.3, the first all-English radio and podcast business show in Ethiopia. My name is Merit Bishrat, along with my co-host Khalid Mawi. Thank you for joining us. The show is brought to you by Pragma Investment Advisory, an investment management and advisory firm based in Addis Ababa, along with our partners, 251 Communications, a very prominent NPR marketing firm also based in Addis Ababa. Today, we'll be speaking with Engineer Balcha Reppa, Director General at Ethiopian Communication Authority, known as ECA. ECA was recently established under the Communication Service Proclamation as an independent federal government authority with a commitment to facilitate the restructuring, the development, the integration of telecommunications, information and communication technology, including electronic commerce, as well as postal and carrier service to form a well-regulated, operated and efficient communication service sector in Ethiopia. As we all know, the government of Ethiopia has announced to open the telecom sector for private players. In line with this, ECA has been established to regulate the telecom market and prepare the required legal frameworks to issue two new mobile network operators licenses. In our discussion with Engineer Balcha, we will be talking about ECA's progress issuing these two new licenses, its mandates and the benefits of opening the telecom sector for private players. Engineer Balcha, warm welcome to Addis Business Talk and thank you for joining us, sir. Pleasure to have you, sir. So let's start our conversation with icebreaker questions. Uh, let me take you back in your early life and career. Uh, briefly, just tell us who's Balcha Reba. And I know that you studied electrical engineering and what makes you to decide electrical engineering? Uh, uh, in, your, in your past, in your career, you have more than 50 years of public service experience. Tell us your journey and different government position and roles you have held in the past prior joining ECA. And as an electrical engineer, what makes you decide to join the public sector, sir? Uh, thank you very much, um, uh, uh, I was born uh, in Addis Ababa. Uh, uh, my mother was a homemaker and my father worked in a factory. Uh, mm-hmm. I have six uh, siblings of which uh, five are girls and I have uh, a brother. Uh, my parents were, were very serious uh, about their children's education, uh, and I was fortunate enough uh, to have attended my uh, elementary education uh, at Awash Tannery Community School, located around Saris, uh, where only kids of employees working uh, in the factory uh, pursue their elementary education. Uh, after completing my education uh, till uh, grade 10 uh, at uh, Nafasil Comprehensive High School, uh, mm-hmm. I went to uh, Addis Ababa uh, Technical School, uh, and I finally, uh, taking National School Living Certificate Examination, uh, joined uh, Addis Ababa University uh, Faculty of uh, Engineering, uh, also known as Addis Ababa Institute of uh, Technology this time. Uh, and uh, graduated with a BSc degree in uh, electrical uh, engineering. Uh, I chose electrical engineering as a major in university uh, because of my childhood wonder. Uh, My decision to study electrical engineering reminds me of my childhood interest, uh, which made me always wonder how a radio transmission comes all the way to our home. My dad was used to listen to news every morning before he leaves to work and every night before he goes to bed on a small radio receiver at our home. When I think of that radio, I only see the external antenna and I was wondering what is inside that uh, device. It was only when I have come across a defective radio receiver that I understood and got a chance to see that there are different parts inside. I identified wires from the antenna running to different elements uh, before coming out as audible signal uh, via the speaker, which I later on realized those elements were to be uh, transistors, resistors, inductors, and capacitors, uh, uh, etc. This really had put huge interest in me to seek more about electronics, electricity, and communication. Uh, Luckily enough, uh, I made it. Uh, when I come to my uh, public service uh, 
Uh, to be frank, when I was in uh, university, I was not entirely certain uh, what kind of career I would pursue. I focused on doing well academically. Uh, most people don't realize that when I was uh, in university, the private sector was practically uh, non-existent. Uh, but I had always regarding uh, government service almost as an obligation that all should do. It is the highest privilege in my opinion. Uh, I have mm -hmm. never been a person uh, who defines success in terms of money or wealth, but the ability to be engaged in a professional endeavor that brings me uh, satisfaction. I'm happy that I am in a professional, uh, in a profession that has brought me not just satisfaction, uh, but also uh, joy. Um, I, I completed and found employment uh, with um, uh, Oromia uh, Water Resource. Uh, that is when I, I graduated from uh, Addis Ababa University. Uh, my mm -hmm. first employment was uh, at Oromia Water Resource Bureau, uh, where I worked as electromechanical engineer, undertaking uh, supervision of electromechanical workers of urban water supply systems. Uh, later, I joined the Ethiopian Telecommunications Authority. Uh, uh, this is uh, the Zen regulatory uh, body where I mm -hmm. served as a head of standard uh, division uh, and also served as director of equipment approval uh, and the standard directorate. Uh, after merger of the Ethiopian Telecommunications uh, Agency and the Ethiopian ICT Development Authority, I worked at Ministry of Communication and Information Technology as director of standardization and regulation. Following another merger uh, between MECIT and the uh, Ministry of Science and Technology, I worked at Ministry of Innovation and Technology as Director of uh, Regulatory Directorate. Uh, now I am serving as a Director General of Ethiopian Communications Authority. In general, I have more than 15 years experience in the telecommunications and ICT sector uh, regulation. In my opinion, public service is closely uh, associated with two things. One is love for one's people in the country, and the other is a huge commitment to trust and honesty. Uh, unless one commits to these two, no one should serve the public. Thank you. Um, thank you for that, Ato, Ato Balcha. Um, coming to our central discussions, um, as we all know, back in June 2018, Prime Minister Abiy's administration announced significant reform plans uh, targeting the telecom sector. Um, maybe for those who aren't made aware or still trying to comprehend the subject matter, uh, if you can help us understand the rationale and the perceived advantages behind the decision to partially privatize Ethio Telecom, as well as to liberalize the telecom sector. I think it's important to also identify the distinction between the two, um, liberalization and privatization, as many still remain to be uh, confused on this. Uh, but also, what were some of the major tasks conducted by the ECA in its one year or so of operation leading up to the anticipated process of liberalization? Now, by no means am I trying to, to, to stretch the question here, but uh, perhaps in your answer, it would be of benefit to also clarify matters regarding the recently reported news on an international media outlet. This is dated August 19, 2020, which has stipulated uh, that, I'm quoting here, the government's regulators have abruptly decided that it would be uh, would no longer take competing bids for operating licenses from a dozen foreign uh, mobile network operators. This is the end of the quote. Uh, is there any truth uh, to this statement? Uh, thank you. Um, uh, the decision to uh, liberalize the telecom sector is, in my opinion, uh, uh, one of the most visionary decisions enacted by our Prime Minister, uh, Dr. Abi Ahmed. Uh, let me give you a little bit of uh, background. Uh, until this decision, Ethiopia was uh, the one of, uh, one of uh, the last three countries, along with Djibouti and Eritrea, uh, to have full government ownership uh, over telecommunication service uh, provision. Uh, when the government decided to reform the telecom sector, it was not just long overdue, but it was uh, out of necessity and not luxury. Uh, the rationale and the perceived advantage of the privatization uh, as well as uh, sector liberalization uh, emanates from the following uh, policy objectives. Uh, one is to enhance Ethiopian digital uh, development uh, that is to have additional infrastructure development in telecommunications. 
Uh, and also the second is uh, establish world-class telecom uh, industry. The third one is enhance telecommunication service accessibility and efficiency. Uh, and the fourth is to maximize revenue uh, from the sector uh, for the nation. Uh, the policy uh, 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 document has uh, policy directions. Uh, uh, there are three directions uh, which are really the major um, uh, point is to be uh, considered in that document. Uh, one is uh, to establish uh, independent and transparent regulatory body uh, that is, you know, to uh, make available uh, the sector law as well as to establish uh, the national regulatory authority, which is uh, the Ethiopian uh, Telecommunications Authority. Uh, the second element is a uh, partial privatization of uh, Ethio Telecom. Uh, this is just uh, to transfer the minor share from Ethio Telecom uh, to the private um, entity. Uh, and the third uh, element is uh, uh, to issue uh, new licenses to additional operators, which is the sector uh, liberalization. Uh, so the policy uh, uh, objectives and the policy directions are, 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 are uh, this, um, which I, I, I already um, mentioned. Um, based on this, uh, the government of Ethiopia has executed uh, all the policy uh, directions uh, uh, based on uh, the uh, policy uh, document. Uh, accordingly, ECA is established, uh, and then after uh, ECA started uh, to uh, uh, to undertake uh, major uh, tasks. Uh, the following are uh, the major tasks uh, conducted by um, the ECA. Uh, just after its establishment. Um, uh, uh, we uh, worked uh, on uh, uh, issuing the, uh, the new uh, telecom sector uh, regulatory um, uh, framework. Uh, that, that framework really indicated that, you know, the sector will be open to uh, competition, uh, that we will be uh, having uh, multiple operators uh, in the sector, uh, and also major elements uh, uh, such as um, the tariff regulation, the spectrum uh, management, and also uh, what kind of licenses are going to be uh, provided. Uh, and also we indicated, you know, uh, the model uh, license uh, which we are going to uh, issue. Uh, and so we conducted a stakeholder consultation uh, uh, on that. Uh, and the other is following the uh, uh, the framework uh, development, we uh, uh, began um, drafting different uh, directives uh, because whenever we are going to open um, a sector for multi uh, operators, uh, we, sh we should make, you know, uh, the level uh, playing field as, as well as, you know, the rule that governs uh, the uh, play has to be um, uh, prepared. Uh, so uh, we develop, developed different uh, directives. Uh, well, one is the licensing directive, uh, uh, and also we developed consumer rights and protection, uh, dispute resolution, quality of service, numbering, infrastructure sharing and co-location, interconnection, SIM card reg registration, lawful tariffs, as well as uh, competition. These 10 directives are already made available for uh, public um, uh, consultation. Uh, at the same time, we have few remaining, which we uh, just um, bring forward you know, for, to consultation uh, in, in the next um, few days. Uh, we have uh, completed the number portability uh, directive, the universal access and service framework, and also the universal service fund uh, regulation, uh, as well as the national frequency allocation table. Uh, these are all completed. Uh, so in a few days, we will uh, post them for uh, public uh, consultation. Uh, at the same time, um, uh, along with developing the uh, directives, uh, we have issued the expression of uh, interest uh, for uh, those uh, companies who really uh, want uh, to join uh, 
the in investment opportunity uh, in uh, Ethiopia. Uh, so we have launched the expression of interest in um, uh, May, and uh, you know, on June 22, we received uh, an expression of interest from uh, 12 um, uh, companies. Uh, so these are uh, the major um, accomplishments uh, of ECA within this uh, one year. Regarding the recent news uh, that states about bids are dropped and no competitive bids uh, to be uh, considered, uh, we have really um, heard that uh, news um, uh, uh, and really uh, we found it, uh, it, is, it, is, it is not uh, a reality. Uh, mm -hmm. That is not uh, totally uh, correct. Uh, but let me give you the details so that your listeners know uh, what is uh, happening. We have launched an expression of interest where we received responses from a dozen of international uh, telecommunications operators. The release of EOIs was uh, for the two new licenses uh, we are going to issue. I have seen some uh, reporters as if it was for the partial privatization of uh, ETO Telecom. This is uh, not uh, correct. I think there has been a misunderstanding and confusion about this. I confirm that no bidders will be excluded. We are now finalizing the preparation of the RFP, uh, the request for proposal, uh, and the next stage will be to receive bids, documents uh, which constitute the next stage. That is the actual bidding phase. We will take competing bids. The launch of RFP is expected to be uh, in months of uh, uh, September. So just we are uh, a few uh, weeks away from launching uh, the next competitive uh, stage uh, in which we invite uh, the actual uh, bid for the interested uh, companies uh, to submit their uh, proposal uh, and, and uh, 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 compete in a competitive uh, bidding uh, manner. Uh, so that is really um, a false statement uh, and it is not, it is a misinformation. We didn't work uh, back on our plan, uh, both for privatization and uh, liberalization. The process is ongoing uh, and for sure by end of uh, this year, we will be issuing two new licenses following the competitive bid uh, process we will be undertaking uh, in a couple of weeks. Wonderful, sir. Uh, thank you for clarifying, uh, clarifying that. Uh, Director General, I think the next question I'm about to ask you uh, is our listeners are very keen on to listen to your response. I, uh, we have got a lot of requests to forward this question for you, sir. Uh, recently, there seems to be a confusion regarding issuing infrastructure license for independent or third party tower operators. We're, on this matter, what is ECA's stand on issuing this infrastructure license for uh, for third party tower operators and answering that uh, this qu answering these questions if you give us an overview of the current telecom infrastructure in the country and how many towers there are and what percentage or kilometers of coverage of the fiber optics are are covered right now um, earlier today uh, uh, ek telecom was held uh, was having a press conference. In that press conference, the CEO announced that uh, ET Telecom will build another additional 800, close to 850 towers all over the country. Uh, in your assessment, in the ECA's assessment on the current ET Telecom infrastructure in terms of accommodating the two new mobile operators for sharing its infrastructure, what's your take on this? What's your assessment? Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, yes, you know, the issue of um, infrastructure license um, ha has been um, uh, in the news uh, recently. Um, we have been, uh, we, we have witnessed, you know, it has been reported um, uh, in, in many uh, newspapers. Um, rather than, you know, um, commenting on whether uh, the um, infrastructure license uh, is uh, allowed or disallowed. Uh, I would uh, prefer, you know, uh, to discuss uh, really uh, what is uh, infrastructure sharing after all. Uh, and also uh, what were discussed, um, you know, during uh, 
the uh, process uh, to come up to uh, this decision uh, or just to have um, as uh, an agenda and then uh, undertake discussion on this um, matter. Uh, to address the issue of infrastructure licenses, uh, let me start with explaining uh, the telecom infrastructure access options for new uh, entrants. We can categorize them into uh, four. Uh, one is uh, to have access or sharing from existing infrastructure, which is the incumbent uh, operator. Uh, the other is to have a tower company or infraco company providing access to you know, infrastructure. This is a third uh, infrastructure uh, provide a third party which provides um, infrastructure. Uh, and the other is infrastructure sharing agreement uh, between the new entrants like uh, mutualization. They can have uh, an agreement to roll out and build um, a network together. They can um, uh, uh, work uh, together. Uh, the other is the standalone development of infrastructure build uh, that is building on um, infrastructure. Uh, as per the uh, uh, communications uh, service law, uh, these uh, new entrants have the right to build their own uh, infrastructure. At the same time, they can uh, share uh, from the incumbent as well as um, uh, share from uh, each, each other uh, be between the new um, uh, entrants. In that regard, we have no uh, uh, problem. Uh, this is uh, supported by the uh, proclamation as well. Uh, the issue is um, how uh, the infrastructure sharing uh, can, can, can be uh, conducted you know, between different um, uh, uh, operators. Uh, everybody accepted that you know, for a fast rollout and the service provision, sharing existing infrastructure is uh, preferable. Infrastructure sharing has proved to be beneficial uh, to the industry players, uh, to the governments, uh, as well as to uh, consumers. Uh, however, infrastructure sharing, if not effectively and efficiently implemented, may, disrupt, may be disruptive, hinder competition, growth, and uh, innovation. Because whenever we think about the uh, infrastructure sharing, we have to consider the economic viability and the technical limitations which might be there. Uh, from the technical limitations, uh, for example, passive infrastructure sharing requires the consideration of many technical, practical, and logistical factors. Although the principle is simple and in theory, any potential impact must be assessed and fully understood before sharing commences to ensure that there are no adverse effects on the operation of the site and the supporting network equipment and systems. Operations must consider items such as load bearing capacity of towers, azimuth angle of different service providers, tilt of the antenna, height of the antenna before executing the agreement. In urban areas and the city centers, rooftop sites tend to be dominant from where the load bearing capacity of the building and the foundation becomes significant. Rooftop sites offer a little amount of space to house additional equipment, which again may require an expensive redesign if sharing is uh, to proceed. While new masters can be built, taking into consideration the ultimate load bearing capacity required, existing masters may not have been designed to cater for the additional load requirement of service providers who decide uh, to share. Uh, there may be physically not be enough space left on the mast to accommodate extra uh, equipment. These days, there is also another factor which is called uh, ten tenancy ratio. Based on a more realistic tenancy ratio of 1.4, especially in developing countries in Africa and the Middle East, uh, hypothesis of one additional tenant on 20% of the tower and the two additional tenants on 10% of the towers. This really shows the limitations we may face uh, in 
in, in sharing or um, uh, relying on uh, the existing uh, uh, infrastructures. Limitations of experience of expertise to manage and to provide best in-class infrastructure service of the existing infrastructure sharing is also uh, to be uh, considered. Uh, because whenever the existing infrastructure, whenever there is an agreement between the um, uh, owner of the existing infrastructure and the new entrant, uh, there will be uh, an SLA to be uh, signed. Uh, so uh, to meet that SLA level, we really need an experienced uh, or expertise to manage uh, this uh, relationship. I am not sure how long we are um, ready to undertake such kind of um, uh, commitments. The other is the economic uh, viability. The government of Ethiopia will be required to invest hundreds of millions of USD to upgrade, strengthen uh, existing sites or build new sites. This may not be supported uh, easily. Uh, therefore, uh, to decide on whether to introduce infrastructure license or not, the situation associated with existing infrastructure has to be analyzed and the decision to be made based on facts on the ground. We have to investigate this and decide by wisdom and uh, truth. Uh, this is the concern of uh, ECA. Uh, we are not making a policy decision, uh, but uh, we have a role in advising uh, the government uh, on policy uh, matters. So what we say is we have to make sure that, you know, the existing infrastructure has to be analyzed, that to be uh, uh, based on the inventory of each site, that how many sites are ready, readily available for sharing, unless we discuss on these factors, uh, maybe this will uh, jeopardize, you know, the relationship uh, later on between the operators uh, as, as well as uh, it will impact the competition. At the same time, uh, it will really become uh, a, a tough uh, scenario because there might be disputes between uh, the operators uh, and they may not uh, get, you know, uh, uh, protection, uh, especially the new entrants, uh, because they have to um, be sure that, you know, whenever they uh, invest on such kind of uh, license, uh, they, they have to plan that, you know, uh, they will get uh, this information in advance. So what we say is, uh, it is good to have all the inventory of uh, the infrastructure. We also need this data, you know, to make uh, part of uh, the RFP document so that, you know, the bidders get information uh, on the type uh, and uh, the uh, quality of uh, the infrastructure they are going to share where after they uh, uh, awarded with um, uh, the new license. So ECS uh, concern is, uh, or what we need really the government to uh, um, look in detail in, uh, into this matter is uh, to get, you know, um, a justification. Once these data are analyzed uh, and uh, we, we really uh, uh, justified that, you know, it is um, enough, at least for a certain period of time, we can really delay the issuance of uh, the third party uh, tower company uh, uh, license. Uh, this is our ECS uh, stand. And of course, we are not opposing the government decision, but we are requesting to really look into this matter in detail uh, and decide uh, or um, retreat the matter and uh, uh, have a consensus uh, on the uh, decision. With regard to the capacity of the existing um, infrastructure, uh, currently there are about uh, 7,300 mobile towers uh, in Ethiopia. Uh, and the, uh, the fiber optics is uh, uh, less than 30,000 uh, kilometers. Uh, Ethio Telecom has um, laid uh, up to about 23,000 kilometers uh, of uh, fiber. Uh, and there are um, uh, fiber uh, lines uh, which are uh, installed by the 
power authorities, the Ethiopian electric uh, power. Uh, currently, even Ethiopia Telecom is using some 5,000 kilometers uh, from um, the uh, OPGW uh, wire line, uh, which is a fiber line uh, for optical uh, ground wire uh, communication um, uh, service. Uh, but they have, um, uh, you know, redundant cords so, uh, so that, you know, they can share it with uh, the operators. So Ethiopia Telecom, uh, if we take together what it has and uh, what it has uh, leased from uh, Ethiopian uh, uh, electric power altogether it doesn't uh, go beyond 28,000 uh, uh, kilometers. Uh, but mm -hmm. as per our study, uh, we have seen that you know just uh, to be uh, in line with uh, uh, pre-regional uh, countries, uh, we need uh, additional uh, 40 to 45,000 uh, uh, kilometers of, um, uh, of fiber. Mm -hmm. uh, so this really you now requires additional um, investment. And also when we see the, the towers, uh, Ethiopia with 1.1 million square kilometer geographic size has uh, only uh, 7,300 uh, towers. The number of towers is low showing a dispropor disproportionately high number of mobile subscribers per tower and high area of square kilometer per tower as compared to regional uh, peers. 4G and the 5G expansion would require site densification, uh, whereas 3G uh, could be served, uh, for example, by one site for every 10 kilometer, but 4G coverage requires one site every uh, two kilometer. So whenever we uh, aspire for uh, the big data, for high speed data uh, connectivity. Uh, we, we, we can see that you know, we really need additional uh, towers. Uh, and, and also with regard to tower, our study indicated that we need in short term about 7,000 additional towers to match mobile coverage in Kenya and uh, uh, Nigeria. Uh, such network expansion will require an estimated investment between US 900 uh, million and uh, US 1.1 um, uh, billion uh, dollars. So this is a huge um, uh, investment. Uh, and to add more on the fiber side, the requirement of fiber will increase uh, because more mobile network operator sites require use of fiber due to expansion of 4G uh, and 5G. Currently, uh, maybe 80% of our uh, towers uh, have uh, backhole connectivity with uh, microwave, but microwave uh, does not carry you know, uh, uh, high uh, bandwidth. So we have to have uh, all uh, the backward connectivity uh, with uh, uh, fiber. Uh, so when we consider uh, this, as I have already indicated, uh, we need uh, additional uh, uh, 40 to 45,000 uh, kilometer. Uh, and just taking uh, with an estimate of um, uh, 20,000 USD per kilometer, we still need another 1 billion USD dollar for the, the fiber uh, connectivity. Uh, so altogether for mobile and the tower, we may uh, need uh, around $2 billion uh, in, in investment. This is a huge investment. So uh, uh, what we are um, uh, proposing or recommending for the government is, are we going to bear these costs by our own or uh, it's, it's, it's good to have, um, uh, you know, to share it with uh, different uh, operators uh, so, so that, you know, uh, we can use this amount of money for uh, other sectors uh, development like education uh, and uh, health uh, sector as well as the, the agricultural sector. So because the, the one element of uh, the privatization is uh, to have, you know, uh, a foreign direct investment, as well as a private sector investment along with the government. So uh, if we allow this thing, you know, uh, really uh, the, uh, the burden of investment uh, will be eased.
so that that is uh, the the stand of um, uh, uh, ECA. Uh, uh, w what we really um, propose is is not to oppose the decision, uh, whatever uh, mm -hmm. the decision uh, is made mm -hmm. or not. Uh, mm -hmm. What we say is, let us have the exact picture of the existing infrastructure. Let us those data submitted uh, to the regulator. Let us analyze it and see if really that infrastructure uh, covers uh, or you know um, uh, is uh, readily available for sharing, and that we can rely on the capacity at least for a certain uh, period of time. So, just we are asking a technical uh, uh, question uh, and to make sure that. Uh, we do not jeopardize uh, any competition uh, due to this uh, shortage of uh, infrastructure unless we really uh, got uh, advanced information and the justification on this matter. Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Tobalja, for, for that wide-ranging um, answer. And I think um, many of our listeners would be clear on the ECA's stance regarding infrastructure implications and, and licensing. Um, a recurring question, especially by third-party infrastructure developers, but also others, is assuming third-party infrastructure providers are not allowed to obtain a license to roll out infrastructure. It is customary for multinational operators to outsource infrastructure development to, to foreign tower companies uh, on usually what they call a build-to-sell model. Um, will this be part of the regulatory scope of the ECA? And if so, has any legal framework been developed to, to house this alliance between operators and, uh, and tower companies? Uh, thank you. Um, uh, this is, I think, uh, uh, an, uh, it is a hypothetical uh, question uh, because these days there are um, uh, different scenarios and the business models uh, 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 to undertake the tower uh, uh, business. Uh, telco or, or telecom operators are now diversifying their uh, tower business. Some went to the level of owning infrastructure company uh, and others opt to sell and lease back. Uh, whatever business model uh, the new entrant is engaged uh, engage with, um, the ECA has uh, developed clear regulatory framework to manage uh, infrastructure sharing and co-location as well as um, interconnection. Uh, so uh, we will um, uh, enforce the infrastructure sharing and co-location as well as the interconnection um, uh, directive. So uh, this time maybe it is too early uh, to comment um, on this uh, because uh, we didn't uh, see uh, you know, what kind of uh, business model uh, the new entrant uh, will, um, uh, will implement uh, to address uh, the requirement of uh, their um, uh, infrastructure. Uh, but, uh, for example, if uh, the um, uh, issuance of a third party infrastructure license is um, allowed, uh, still, uh, we have already uh, developed, you know, uh, the directive uh, for the uh, management of uh, third-party infrastructures. Uh, however, we will issue that uh, document uh, for consultation uh, only if uh, the decision uh, not to allow at least at early stage uh, for the third-party infrastructure uh, uh, is um, uh, is. Um, is passed. Uh, so uh, we are really ready uh, as ECA, we are uh, ready you know, uh, to manage uh, infrastructure related um, uh, matters uh, and how they really share the infrastructure, uh, what, what kind of um, principles uh, they uh, follow uh, and also uh, how they really support the fair uh, uh, and the, uh, the fair competition uh, among uh, themselves. Uh, so I, I think you know our um, directive, the two directives we have issued on infrastructure sharing and interconnection mm -hmm. will handle this matter. Wonderful. Uh, 
Moving on, uh, as we know, a uh, number of times the Ethiopian government shut down the internet for security reasons to safeguard the national interest and to enforce peace and stability in the country. Uh, however, uh, this kind of measures are required in the government eyes, uh, but it brings considerable loss for mobile operators. Uh, if the two new mobile operators are subjected to this kind of measures when they enter the market, as a regulator, sir, how will you try to address this in the future if, if it comes? And how will you try to balance the loss of revenue by MNOs and the security concerns, uh, security concerns of the nation? Uh, this is a good question. Uh, shutting down the internet was done uh, for national security reasons. Uh, mm -hmm. and the national security cannot be uh, compromised. Yes. Uh, our telecoms partners will be operating uh, under the same laws as every other business in our country. So no uh, exceptions uh, will be made for specific sectors or specific companies when it comes to Ethiopian law and issues of Ethiopian uh, national uh, security. However, uh, this is a new reality with three operators in the country, and we are thinking very critically about this. Uh, we will closely work with all stakeholders, including the national security, to come up with a decision process when this is absolutely uh, required. Mm -hmm. uh, wonderful, Dr. Balcha. Um, there seems to be growing concerns that the entry and operation of multinational um, telecom operators who are usually known for their long-standing operational experience, complex business techniques that they deploy, um, at times powerful bargaining positions that they hold. It may require, some would say, a robust and sophisticated regulatory capacity. Um, can you help us understand, maybe also by way of bestowing some confidence to the public, the technical and human resource capabilities of the ECA to successfully maintain jurisdiction over new global entrants in the telecom market? Uh, thank you. Um... I, I think we, we, we have to consider here uh, two things. One is uh, the regulatory capacity uh, and also the uh, operational um, uh, efficiency. Uh, regulatory capacity is a uh, comparative. Um, it doesn't only uh, engage with operational efficiency. One important element of regulatory capacity is the regulator's independence. Independence is a critical attribute for a regulator to be uh, effective. However, effectiveness has additional dimensions. Uh, in a broad sense, uh, an effective regulator is structurally and financially independent, but the real effectiveness of the regulator will lie in how it achieves successful functionality, ideally in an independent and autonomous uh, manner. In a structural sense, independence means guaranteeing that the regulator maintains an arm's length relationship with private industry and the other branches of uh, the government. Uh, successful functionality is achieved when the regulator establishes clear, clear rules that will govern such matters as its mandate and functions, its funding, and the implementation of its authorities and then is able to execute those rules fairly and in a timely uh, uh, fashion. Although telecommunications market around the world are uh, circumstantial, uh, the basic difference, the basic direction of change is uh, similar in most countries. It is therefore not surprising that the principles of effective regulation around the world are converging. Harmonizing with regional and global regulatory standards will contribute towards building uh, of uh, operational uh, efficiencies. In making experienced staffs on board, ECA is uh, uh, lucky, I can say. Uh, we didn't start from scratch. We had mm -hmm. experienced staffs in major regulatory functions. These staffs were working in the then Ethiopian Communications Authority, Telecommunications Authority, uh, regulatory department uh, under uh, Ministry of Communication and IT, uh, and also under Ministry of Innovation and Technology. Uh, that is why we achieved outstanding achievement in one year uh, time. Experience makes a difference. 
We have key staffs who have worked in the sector regulation for over 15 years. We also work alongside highly skilled global individual consultants who have contributed to telecommunications reform worldwide and have been serving and a partner with International uh, Telecommunications uh, Union. Therefore, we have drafted clear legal and regulatory framework, have experienced staffs and international consultants, and we regulate in principle. Uh, for the technology is very dynamic. We will continue building capacity of our um, employees. However, for the time being, we are really in good shape so that we can oversight this sector in a multiple operator scenario in a competitive way. Great. I think um, that hopefully will, listen, will instill some confidence there uh, out to uh, those who have questions uh, about the regulatory capacity. Um, moving on to the next question, the ECA's um, scope of regulation, as of course stipulated in the Communication Service Proclamation, also covers postal services and electronic commerce. Maybe some or many of us might have forgotten about this uh, component as the telecom space is receiving more attention. But as you are aware, a number of regulatory developments have taken place in areas of e-commerce and digital payments, such as the Electronic Transactions Proclamation, the licensing and authorization of payment instrument issuers, this is by the National Bank, the National Digital Economy Strategy, of course, tabled by the Ministry of Innovation and Technology, the question is, what are the important elements as part of the particular command of the ECA to regulate e-commerce and postal services? And are there any developments so far, including with respect to timeline of issuing regulatory directives in this regard? Oh, yes. Um, as defined in the Communication Service Proclamation uh, number uh, 1148, 2019, uh, the definition of the communication service includes uh, postal service. Uh, also, uh, uh, in Article uh, uh, 6, sub-Article 7, uh, the ECA has uh, the power uh, to license postal services and undertake reg regulatory activities uh, in uh, postal um, uh, sectors. Uh, at the same time, uh, Article 626, uh, which is uh, Article 6, sub Article 26 of the proclamation confers on the authority the power to ensure electronic commerce through the use of uh, digital signatures to lend authenticity and the integrity to correspondence in any electronic um, uh, medium. Uh, ECA uh, to undertake these uh, responsibilities uh, uh, has been and also uh, is working uh, on um, the following um, areas. Uh, one is development of legal and regulatory frameworks, like we do for the telecom sectors. Uh, we are working on the um, postal sector as well. Uh, one is to amend the postal service law. Uh, this uh, postal service law is a very old one. Uh, it, it was um, uh, enacted in, um, in 1966, uh, mm. it is um, uh, an, an old uh, proclamation. So now we, we have prepared uh, an amendment uh, to this um, law. Uh, so uh, in um, uh, this um, uh, fiscal year, uh, the, this law will be um, a, submitted for consultation at the same time, will be submitted to the Council of, Council of Ministers and the, the Parliament for um, uh, in endorsement. The other is to have um, to develop a postal sector policy. Uh, in, in Ethiopia, uh, though the designated national postal service operator um, uh, is uh, working uh, with uh, full ownership of the government, uh, the express courier service part is uh, liberalized. Uh, we have mm -hmm. um, different uh, courier service providers uh, in this country. Uh, but, you know, uh, unless it is stated on the investment uh, uh, proclamation uh, and regulation, uh, this issue is not covered by uh, a policy. So we are developing the postal sector policy, which addresses uh, the, uh, the efficient uh, postal uh, uh, sector. 
the other is uh, developing national postcode standards and addressing system. Uh, mm -hmm. This time, especially with the advent of uh, the e-commerce, the addressing system has to be given uh, uh, due attention and uh, consideration uh, because uh, we can order things online, but we can't move. We can't move them uh, online. The items has to be moved uh, physically. Uh, so. Um, if uh, we are thinking of a modern postal service, uh, which covers, you know, home to home delivery, uh, mm -hmm. we should have, you know, uh, a standard uh, postal code and addressing uh, system. Uh, I, I think um, the, uh, the Geospatial Institute is also working on national addressing system. So mm -hmm. our national post code uh, will be uh, addressed together with the national addressing system being developed by the uh, uh, Geospatial uh, Institute. Uh, so we are also working uh, on, on this regard. This, is, this will really um, uh, make you know, the e-commerce uh, uh, service uh, very uh, efficient and um, effective. Uh, we have also uh, developed the postal uh, quality of service. Like the telecom service, the postal sector has its own uh, quality of service, uh, like how many days it will take, especially, uh, let's say, for distribution in uh, uh, cities, for distribution in uh, uh, regions, for distribution in international uh, uh, mails. So. Uh, we are working, you know, with the Universal Postal Union. Uh, mm -hmm. We are a member of uh, the Universal Postal Union. Uh, there are obligations uh, uh, we have to fulfill, especially in the quality of uh, the service as well. So uh, we are also uh, we have also developed uh, this document. Uh, this time, you know, just we really give uh, priority to telecom related activities. Uh, since we are really in, engaged ourselves in the telecom uh, sector reform, uh, and uh, we, we didn't want, you know, really to uh, to overburden, you know, uh, our stakeholders uh, to to be uh, divided between the telecom and the postal. So once now the, we have completed the. Uh, uh, telecom related uh, uh, consultations, we will uh, launch the consultations on the postal uh, uh, sector legal and regulatory framework um, in near uh, future. Uh, for the support of um, e-commerce, uh, ECA is now uh, uh, working on uh, different uh, projects. Uh, one is uh, to establish the government certification authority. Uh, uh, as we may know, uh, as we all know, uh, the, um, for the e efficient e-commerce uh, service, uh, there has to be uh, a root certification uh, authority. The root certification authority will be uh, INSA, uh, and uh, ECA will be uh, the government certification uh, authority. Uh, be because um, in um, uh, establishing the certification authority, there are different uh, models. Uh, sometimes for commercial, we can nominate um, for commercial or financial services, a, a different uh, certification authority can be nominated. Uh, but now we really, based on the provisions in the electronic transaction uh, proclamation, uh, ECA is working on the development uh, and establishment of the government certification uh, authority. At the same time, we are working uh, on the uh, country code top level domain uh, .ET, uh, management. This, this will have its own its own uh, contribution uh, for the uh, uh, e-commerce. Uh, so these are really the areas where we have been uh, focusing on the postal sector. Wonderful, sir. Uh, I think, General Balja, you uh, addressed it very well. I, I think this part of the ECA's mandate to regulate the carrier service and the postal service has been neglected in the public conversation. Uh, I think addressing this is very good. Thank you for that elaborative uh, uh, address. Moving on, in your view, what is the benefit of this partial privatization or liberalization of the, sec of the telecom sector would bring to the country by facilitating the creation of jobs, uh, adding value to the overall Ethiopian economy? And how do you see this initiative bring change or opportunity for normal citizens uh, 
because we hear some critics saying that uh, the government embarked on this initiative to, to only get dollars uh, or and to appease the microeconomic imbalances and to address the to uh, address and stabilize our external b- debt burden what's your take on this and could you briefly uh, tell us how the new mnos will reach out to the rural side of the country to offer their services how do you how will how will eca will make sure this will happen uh, t- thank you Uh, the uh, the benefits of uh, liberalization uh, uh, and uh, privatization uh, is, uh, is 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 very wide. Uh, it, it is not only uh, um, uh, as uh, at the country level, but it goes you know to every uh, uh, citizens. Um, it is a very uh, inclusive um, uh, reform. This uh, telecom. Uh, privatization and the liberalization um, uh, uh, activity. Uh, as I have already indicated um, uh, during the beginning of uh, my, um, uh, my my interview, uh, one of uh, the benefit uh, or one of the objective was to enhance uh, its open digital uh, uh, economy. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the digital economy, uh, modernization of the telecommunication sector will play an important role uh, in introducing uh, and expanding new technologies that will move uh, Ethiopia forward. Uh, various studies have shown that the development of uh, telecommunication sector will help in the production uh, of technologically advanced industrial products in the country. Uh, in this regard, the development of telecommunication will play a key role in the development of new business models, especially in creating job opportunities uh, for the youth. Uh, the sector reform will, will also open the door for Ethiopia to be a country that exports telecom products uh, and services, uh, especially in areas of uh, business process outsourcing. Uh, many of uh, our local companies uh, have been Uh, facing uh, challenges uh, due to uh, the internet penetration or uh, the low uh, capacity or low bandwidth or low speed of uh, the internet uh, service. So uh, this uh, transformation will really uh, bring uh, a good environment uh, to uh, our private uh, sector. In addition, the telecommunication sector uh, will be of great importance for the development of the manufacturing uh, sector and the rapid growth of uh, telecom services, especially for the growth of foreign direct investment. Overall, it is expected that the modernization of the sector will significantly contribute to the growth of uh, uh, the economy. Uh, with regard to the universal access uh, and the service, um, ECA uh, will tirelessly work on uh, and advocate for universal, reliable, and affordable connectivity, uh, and will continue to push on all fronts until everyone is uh, connected, uh, especially when uh, privatization or liberalization is introduced in every country. One major issue uh, to be considered is Uh, if these private companies can uh, go to uh, remote areas uh, and address you know, the communication need of uh, our people who live in remote areas, in rural areas, uh, in uh, underserved or unserved um, areas. For, for this, uh, we have uh, really uh, made available you know, a framework uh, to manage this so that the uh, uh, new entrants as well as the incumbents will address the communication needs of our people uh, residing in uh, rural areas. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Balcha, for that comprehensive uh, insight and answer. Um, coming to the end of the segment, uh, perhaps briefly, as we seem to be a bit constrained with time, although there's so much more to talk about in this area of discussion, um, if you have any final message, any area you deem important to cover, to clarify, to address, we're more than happy uh, to give you the chance. Uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I, I think I, I do not have any special um, area, especially with regard to the um, uh, 
uh, ECS uh, activity, but I would like uh, to make a general uh, message. Um, uh, uh, really, this time, uh, the best days uh, of Ethiopia is in front of us. Uh, we all have so much work to do to bring about a much needed improvement in almost every sector in our country. Uh, poverty reduction, ensuring the people of Ethiopia have access to basic needs, including water, electricity, and education, uh, and also to become the economic power of uh, the economic powerhouse of Africa. We can't even uh, begin to dream about this unless this reform becomes successful and the digitally transformation digital transformation is um, realized. Uh, really. Uh, I thank you very much uh, for having me. It has been an honor, an honor to be uh, on your show. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Ato Valcha. We're more than honored and happy to have given you the chance and the platform to express um, your, your uh, ideas and your opinions and uh, the ECA's stance on some of the uh, interesting issues that were being raised. And I think on that very, very positive and encouraging note, Engineer Balcha Reba, Director General of the Ethiopian Communications Authority, thank you very much again for joining us here on Addis Business Talk to shed some light on important issues that needed to be addressed. I'm sure this will go a long way in appeasing the ambiguities around telecom, although these discussions are not conclusive and will remain to be had. And so we hope to have you uh, back on the show again as more development takes place. Thank you again and, and best of luck to you, sir. Thank you.